I believe that this is the week that we find out who the Chicago Bears really are. With a 2-2 two and two record and a rookie quarterback, the Bears have a primetime opportunity at home against the Panthers this week to improve to a 3-2 and two record and get above 500. Expectations have been a little out of whack considering we have a rookie quarterback, but Caleb Williams actually became the first quarterback to win his first start since David Carr did it over 20 years ago. And then he became the first rookie quarterback to start out 2-0 at home this century. Even with all of the struggles on offense the first four weeks, the 2024 season has still been a success so far. We've already won two games, and we've had an opportunity in the fourth quarter to win all four of these games. The biggest thing right now, though, and the most important thing about the Bears, and the thing that all of these coaches should be focused on most, is developing Caleb Williams and protecting him. But this Bears team is playing really good football right now, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And while this isn't a must-win game, to me, I believe this is a statement game for the 2024 Chicago Bears. The future of this franchise is bright no matter what, but when it comes to this season, we'll find out a lot this weekend against the Panthers. If Matt Eberflus wants to be taken seriously as a head coach, this is a game he needs to win. And while I would never overreact to just one game, to me, this is a game we need to win. Not only do the Panthers represent an opportunity for us to go 3-2, and two, but beating them also helps improve our second round pick that we get from them next season. And they are also just a team that we should beat, if you ask me. They have a rookie head coach, they are missing their two best players on defense, and they just benched last year's number one pick, Bryce Young, for Andy Dalton. It does have the makings of a trap game, but that's why this is important for Matt Eberflus to have our players ready to go on Sunday. But I also wanted to talk about something else when it comes to rookie quarterbacks and expectations. Everyone wants to talk about C.J. Stroud and the season he had last year and compare it to Caleb Williams. But the only thing they remember is that the Texans went to the playoffs and that C.J. Stroud threw for 4,000 plus yards. They don't remember the struggles he had his rookie season. They don't remember the Texans starting out 0-2 or that they lost four of their first seven games. It wasn't until week nine of the season, when C.J. Stroud and the Texans finally got into a groove, week nine last year. Think about that. Even C.J. Stroud, who had probably the best season of any rookie quarterback in history, he didn't even break out until week nine last season. But some fans have already given up on Caleb after three or four weeks. Last year, C.J. Stroud and the Texans also took on the Panthers. So this is a relevant point here, especially if somehow we lose the game on Sunday. The Texans lost to the Panthers last year. That Panthers team last year that gave us the number one overall pick, that only won two games all season, one of those two wins came in week eight last year, halfway through the season, and Bryce Young actually outperformed C.J. Stroud in that game. And the Panthers won. The Panthers beat the Texans in week eight last season. C.J. Stroud struggled in that game. He only threw for 140 yards and didn't throw a touchdown. But guess what he did the week after that? In week nine, he bounced back. That's what great quarterbacks do. And he threw for 470 yards and five TDs against the Bucks, having his best performance of the season after losing to the Panthers. But he was a rookie. It's not like he was just perfect after that either. Two weeks after throwing for 470 yards and five touchdowns, he would struggle again and throw three interceptions against the Cardinals. He would bounce back and learn from his mistakes, which is integral for a rookie quarterback. After he threw three interceptions in week 11 last year, CJ wouldn't throw another interception all season long. He would play seven more games after that and throw nine touchdowns to zero interceptions to close out the year, but things didn't really start to click for him until week 12 of the season. My main point though is that all rookie quarterbacks struggle. All rookie quarterbacks make mistakes. Even C.J. Stroud, who was the best rookie quarterback we've ever seen, he still struggled at times last year and still had bad weeks, even losing to the Carolina Panthers. But fans forget that and have short memories. But to me, this week's matchup against the Panthers 
is about more than Caleb Williams. And I think this Bears team is talented enough to win, even if Caleb struggles. So that's why I'm putting this one clearly on the coaching staff. This is a game for Matt Eberflus and Shane Waldron to prove their worth as coaches. This game is on them. We all know that Caleb is going to have some growing pains. What we don't know is if Matt Eberflus and Shane Waldron can put together a game plan that covers those mistakes up and helps us get our third win of the season. Look, there are no easy wins in the NFL, and on any given Sunday, either team can come out victorious. That's what makes the NFL so fun. But the difference between good teams and bad teams are winning the games they are supposed to win. That's the difference between making the playoffs and missing the playoffs. And this game against the Panthers is a game we should win. They have one of the worst defenses in the entire NFL, they were already without Pro Bowl defensive tackle Derek Brown, but then they lost their second best player on defense too, linebacker Shaq Thompson. On top of that, they're going to be missing wide receiver Adam Thielen and running back Jonathan Brooks on offense, and they've turned to Andy Dalton. This is Matt Eberflus's third season as a head coach, and I thought he coached very well against Sean McVay last week. He has to follow that up. And this is Shane Waldron's fourth year as a play caller against a rookie head coach and second year play caller in Dave Canales. On top of that, there's another layer to this though. Canales was with Waldron in Seattle. He was the QB coach, but Waldron called the plays. Some people have given Canales the credit for turning Geno Smith's career around and for what Baker Mayfield did in Tampa last season as well. So if he comes out with a better game plan than Waldron in this one, those questions are going to seem pretty valid. This is a big game for our coaching staff. Basically, we already know that rookie quarterbacks struggle, and it's on the coaches to protect our rookie quarterback in this one and get us a win against the reeling Panthers squad and start Caleb off 3-0 at home. Look, I'm not saying we need a statement victory or anything, or that we have to blow the Panthers out. But I do think we have to win this game. The Panthers are a team that is in shambles. If Matt Eberflus is serious and wants to remain in Chicago long term, this is a game we do not let slip away. Even if it's ugly, we need to win this game. Let me rephrase that. Matt Eberflus needs to get this team ready to play. And as a coach, he really needs a win on Sunday. But I'm excited. I do think we can win this game. The Bears could open the season 3-2. and two, And that's better than I expected with a rookie quarterback. What do you guys think? How are we feeling? Thursday night football kicks off tonight. Please hit that like button for me if you think we can beat the Panthers on Sunday. Stay tuned, and until next time, bear down.